What's going on YouTube? Welcome back. Today we're doing a machine from like the box. The machine name is Axis and it is also part of the track we are currently doing, the registered penetration tester. Uh, so basically this machine is a retired machine. Um, be prepared to be patient because this machine is obviously not stable at all. Uh, the techniques we're going to use in this machine are straightforward, easy, simple techniques. But the machine has some stability issues when it comes to the uh, shell navigation and when it comes to privilege escalation some commands will not work and as you will see down the road i couldn't get the root flag but i will show you how to get it so let's get started so the first thing i did was the nmap scan as i always do nmap scan dash a and this is the ip address so basically we got three open ports 80 23 and 21 21 FTP allows for anonymous access as stated here. Also, we have Telnet. There's also a possibility that we can log into Telnet. And we have port 80. So on port 80, there is nothing you can do here. It's only a one web page. You can view the page source. You can try direct research, but don't waste your time. Nothing in here. That's why walkthroughs are there on the internet to save your time if you actually are stuck. Now, uh, after that, so we proceed i proceeded and added the name of the machine to the host file and then i logged in with the ftp server now in the ftp server nothing will actually stand out except that you have to enable the binary mode in order to download the files as you can see i logged in i provided anonymous as username and password and i logged in so we have two directories backups and engineer so what i did I cd'd two backups, okay, and there is one database file backup.mdb. So we download this file to the local machine. We do the same for engineer, the directory engineer. Again, there is one file under the engineer directory, the file name or the file is a zip file. So we download the file using the command get, and the file will be in the local machine. Again, one thing you have to do if you try to download the files once you log in it's not gonna work so you have to enable the binary mode so tap binary to enable downloading the files in binary mode if you don't enable the binary mode the download process will not work so we have two files one mdb file the md file is a microsoft database or microsoft access we can you can open it with microsoft access to navigate through the tables and extract useful information now for the zip file we have to unzip the file so the first thing we do or i did is i actually use a tool called mdb dash tables this will <coughs> actually save you the time and energy of using microsoft access because you know microsoft tools uh, <laughs> i don't need to talk about them so mdb dash tables and we specify the database we downloaded here it displays the tables that are stored in the database so if you take a look at the tables we want to find a table that contains sensitive information usually the table that contains sensitive information comes along the lines the name comes along in the lines of user or authentication something like that so if you scroll through we see a table named authentication underscore user so most probably now it's the table we want to interact with but mdb dash tables doesn't allow us to interact with the table we need to use mdb dash sql to interact with the tables so mdb dash sql and the database name this will enable you to run queries against the database so nothing new here we just issue sql queries so select username from authentication underscore user so i assumed myself that there is a column named username under which we can extract the values so select username from authentication user the table and then we type go this will display the current values under the username column so we have admin engineer and backup admin now most probably now uh, you may be wondering how do you know that there is a table called username so basically just i tried because normally all of the tables all user tables the column the column responsible for storing the username values most probably comes uh, along the line of username, users, uh, 
user usernames with s but most of the time 90% of the time it is username so i guess it is username if you don't want to go through the uh, estimation process you can just select star or asterisk from authentication user this will display all of the uh, column names of the of this table okay back to the point now we have three users admin engineer and backup admin now we're interested in extracting the passwords for these users so what we can do as we have a column name a column called username it means we have also another column for the passwords so again select password from authentication user where username equal admin this didn't work i want to extract the password for the username admin this didn't work as you can see i tried for this engineer also this doesn't work so what i did i extracted all the information available under the column passwords what i did here as you can see, select password from authentication user display all the values under the column passwords and it worked as you can see have admin access for you at security and admin these are the passwords for these users respectively so engineer and access for you security this is the password that we're going to use okay and the next thing we're going to do is to handle the zip file so we have a zip file here i unzip the file with unzip but nothing happened as you can see there is one pst file under the zip file but it doesn't prompt me for any sort of password at the same time it didn't extract the file i wanted so what i used 7ze and this will actually this prompt me to put the password so among the passwords <coughs> we have three passwords among them this one worked in extracting the contents of the zip file and we got one pst file again you can open the pst file with maybe outlook import import it to outlook but again if you don't want to deal with microsoft tools <coughs> kelly has you're back so basically you can download read pst if you don't have it this will read all of the pst files that you come across now once you read the pst file it will extract or it will extract the files inside it basically the mailboxes so if we take a look at the files we can see we have one mailbox again to read the mailbox we have to use cat so we use cat to read the mailbox and we see the contents of the email so we can see an email coming from john at megacorp Okay, and the email was sent to security at accesscontrolsystem.com. And if you scroll a bit down, you can see the body of the email. So hi there. The password for the security account has been changed to this. Please ensure this is passed on to your engineers. Regards, John. So again, now we discover another plain text password for an account named security. Back with Nmap scan how we can use this account. So here we have other than FTP and the web server we have one uh, servers running telnet so we can log in now to telnet using the password we extracted and with the same account again back here so I telnet to the machine I was asked with the username I supplied the username I got from the email and the password is this once I supplied these credentials i was able to log in but here here where you start to learn patience because there is something with the retired machines in hack the box i don't know what it is uh not all of them of course but some of them are buggy slow totally sloppy machines <laughs> so be prepared for this one so as you can see here um, uh, the, the shell is actually slow so i tried here to as you can see i displayed the contents of the directory the IR I saw the user flag this is the user flag by the way okay now the other thing I wanted to do guys is to download netcat to the machine so that I connect from this shell to the netcat okay so I downloaded netcat to the machine using cert utility of course you have to host uh, netcat on a web server running on your machine as you can see here okay so I download netcat successfully to the machine but what I discovered under the uh, public directory, specifically desktop, there is a file, ZK Access Security System link. It's a, it's a link file. So the only way to be able to view this, the contents of the file, is to use the type command. So I use type command to view the contents of this file, and 
I saw this line run as so run as is a way to run commands as another user as you can see here probably the system administrator or someone who was using the system they tried to run uh, a couple of commands here using the user administrator and with the option dash save cred save cred means uh, it allows you to run the command as the user you want in this case it is administrator without the need to ask for password but the ability to use this command okay is conditioned with an option that has to be checked in the configuration of the said user so here we're trying to run a command as the user administrator without the need to supply the password so if you check the user administrator the properties of that user we see that password required option is checked as no which means the save cred option will work here we don't need to supply the password to run commands as administrator much like in linux when you run sudo dash l right uh, you will see the available commands you can run as root or in elevated mode some commands are not required to run uh, with the password same as here if you check password required to know or if you enable it and make the file equal to know you'll be able to run uh, commands as this user without the need to supply passwords of course you have to use the option sl uh, uh, slash save cred so that's what we will take advantage of but unfortunately run as command not working on this machine for some reason we're gonna try it out together but it didn't work with me anyway so what I did here guys what I will do let me scroll down all the failed attempts so here run as right so run as slash user administrator save grid and here remember I downloaded netcat to the machine I use netcat to connect to my machine on port 4545 as you can see nothing worked so I thought first that it is because of the instability of the shell so I here created or I ran Nishank PowerShell to connect to my machine and to run another shell of course as the user security as you can see here I had another user another shell as PowerShell and that's because I connected from Telnet shell to PowerShell just to have a more stable shell so what I did here again back here run as again administrator save cred and I stored here as you can see here in this command I stored um, the command to run netcat and to connect to my machine I have a lesson running here on 4546 I stored in a bat file and then I tried to run the bat file as admin nothing worked I tried to run to specify the profile again nothing worked here I tried to connect as you can see um, sorry here I tried to connect or run uh, netcat as admin using run as again I received nothing nothing works so what I'm going to try now let's leave this running 4546 I'm going to specify the full path as shown here in the file so the full path to the run as here as it shows it is under Windows system to run as so let's copy that and say um, okay and we let's make sure we are copying because this shell is so buggy guys we have to make sure to copy the right characters okay now we're going to put space and we're going to use slash user administrator exact this one exactly the same but we're going to change the port to six let's review the command now so see windows system to run as user administrator use the option save cred and we run netcat as administrator so let's see if this will work yeah nothing as expected it's not gonna work let's try one more time with this maybe if we run this alone yeah even if you run run as alone it doesn't work so no idea why this doesn't work but expect to expect these kind of scenarios when you solve 
with tired machines and hack the box. Uh, with tired machines, sometimes they have buggy um, tools, buggy shells, all sorts of buggy things, you know. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the root flag of this machine because run as doesn't work. Probably I will have to try some other way, but try on your own. If it worked for you guys, maybe you can guide me. Put your opinions in the comments section of this video. For this, for now, I'm going to see you later. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.